What is up, everybody? I have a lot of updates to show this month of things like the Nest Maker Guidebook, uh, Mystic Searches, uh, the some the Retroverse, uh, some other cool things. But one of the updates that I want to give is on Gamer Quest and the Gamer Quest RPG module. Um, the Gamer Quest R the RPG module is going to be one of the strangest modules because so much of the software is completely fundamentally changed uh, under the hood because an RPG is so radically different that it, it it won't be as easy just to plug in and play as it is to say make a platform game. But that is what you'd expect because an RPG is exponentially more complicated and uses the data in a completely different way. Anyway, but I did want to show you guys uh, the working battle system uh, and how it worked, uh, the overworld, uh, talk about a couple of the decisions and why we went with it. And we are going to make a bunch of videos that show how each of these things breaks Nest Maker's code and achieves its ends. And I, I just wanted to point out to you because you might not know what you're looking at. Um, so let me first just uh, run this. First of all, we have a some very nice assets uh, courtesy of people, various people in the community. Um, you know most of them if you are a Nest Maker user. Um, maximize this. So some start screen music. Really cool uh, title screen, looks a lot, if you haven't seen the documentary's cover art, it looks very much like it. So let's go ahead, we'll have a start and continue function. Um, we're gonna talk about the continue functionality later when we talk a little bit more about uh, how that's gonna work in Mystic Searches as well. Um, but let me go ahead and start the game. And what we have is we have an overworld and it's a grid-based movement system with which completely jettisons the entire physics of that nest maker uses so now we have our battle system these are some some sort of cyborg biker pigs uh there's all kinds of monsters uh in this opening area and what you have is you've got all of your players along the bottom um and you've also if you haven't noticed we've got the box that appears that gives at least some uh indication of battle status and updates and things like that um along each character and probably myself and Austin won't be in this that we had those graphics so they're kind of placeholder uh, courtesy of Fernando uh, music courtesy of Patricio um, what we're going to do is uh, start the battle and now we get these timers that are counting down all these timers that count down and they count down independently based on a player's speed now if I wait too long they're gonna attack me there Joe received five points of damage um, so I'm going to just pick one of the guys whose timer um, had, had gone up. Now, once I select an action, uh, the timer stops. So I have a minute to talk here. Now I can select uh, one of the monsters, and you can see their hit points show up at, underneath them. And I haven't decided whether I'm going to keep that or not yet, but um, let me go ahead and get this guy. And each of them has a different strength, a different set of hit points, um, a different speed for their timer to reset. So you can see at the top, he's got a strength of three. Um, and then I just received some damage. Now I'm gonna go through and attack these. Joe and Austin only have a strength of one. Rob takes the longest to charge, but once he's charged, is the strongest. So he got rid of that monster there. Um, and So we got the screen shake going when you actually get hit. Um, it's randomly selecting the, the monsters that appear on the screen. It's randomly selecting targets uh, for the monsters to attack. Uh, it might get more intelligent than that. I, it just depends on how much ROM space that we have when we actually get into finishing the game. Um, so Austin is getting close to being taken out. All right, so you beat all the foes, and it jumps back to the wherever I was on the main game, uh, overworld. And when it does that, it, it maintained the positions when I went to battle, and now it'll warp me back to the same screen at the same position. And now I should get different monsters. It's random, so it might be the same, but yeah, different monsters. So now we have Borg Cat, so like a cybernetic cat. So let me uh, see if I can... Probably one of my characters is going to die in this. Uh, Austin probably will not survive this battle. Unless I get lucky. Yeah, they are going to go after.
after Austin. There you go. So Austin is has died. Now I'm going to make it so you can't even select him, but as of right now, I can still get there. I just can't do anything once I'm there. Um, so now, let me get the rest of these guys. And this gives you an idea of how the battle system is going to work. So it's kind of a cross between uh, uh, some different uh, Final Fantasy and Dragon Warrior. It's got that first person um, Dragon Warrior look, um, but you can see your avatars, your players, so it feels a little like Final Fantasy. Now, you don't just attack, you can defend, um, and then you've got some special moves as well. Um, tools, basically your tools, your spells, um, your tools would be your items too, and then running away. And that little battery meter at the bottom, that is going to be your magic meter. So, uh, let me let all of my characters be deceased here, so I'll just let them take me out here. Oops. Battle won't advance unless I click past that pop-up. So I'm just waiting for them to attack me here. And you can see they have a animation frame when they do their attack. And now they're going to go after Jay. And there's all kinds of little tiny problems and things to fix here um, as far as um, the targeting system and the speed at which the battle moves and things like that. And now the party's been defeated and right now it's going to reset. It would go to your continue point, but right now when I press the B it'll reset. There we go. It starts over again. 